Hi, this is Dr. Viola Pierce coming to you today to talk with you, our wonderful healthcare providers, in the midst of this pandemic. Hit the subscribe button because we would love to have you as a part of our tribe. And just so you know, we love your comments. There are so many things that are going on at this time. There are some that are on the front lines and wondering how this disease process will behave in their own bodies if they were to become infected. And then there are those that are getting laid off and wondering where the, their next paycheck is coming from. This pandemic has not left a stone unturned. I wanted to come to you today with a message of love, of hope, and of joy. I am sure that we all have had our share of panic during this time. I would just like to invest in you and give you some of the things that I have done just to reel in my own panic. Those that know me know that I have been a nurse for more than 27 years. Most of my nursing career, I have been an emergency department nurse on the front lines. I still work in the healthcare setting, just not in the ED. I own two companies. One is VP Nursing and the other is the Nurse Nurturer. Both companies have the same mission and values. Our goal is to equip healthcare providers to be spiritually and physically fed, financially stable, and able to lead with integrity, to decrease error at the bedside, but also to live full empowered lives. We want to be here for our patients, but being here for ourselves is most important. When you fly, for example, they say put the oxygen mask on yourself first prior to putting it on your children. Because if you don't put the oxygen mask on yourself and you become hypoxic, you are of no good to your children. Then they are left to the runner and left vulnerable to the rest of the passengers on the plane. This works in the same way with your patient. If you don't care for yourself, then your patients are left vulnerable and in the hands of those who may be less capable of caring for them. I want to share seven things that can help calm your fears. Number one is to take this advice from this Ebola nurse. Now, this is something that I shared on my Nurse Nurturer page on Facebook. So if you're not a member, go ahead and become a member of that, that tribe. It is a private group where we're offering encouragement, but we also want to have a little fun too. It was, rather, it was a rather lengthy post, so I will give you a small synopsis of it. I want you to listen to this advice very carefully. Put down what you're doing and pay close attention. There is not an emergency in a pandemic. If you do not have proper PPE, do not go in, no matter what. You as a healthcare worker are a force multiplier. Your training and experience is invaluable moving into this crisis. You're going to be faced with some very difficult moments. You're going to have to put your needs first. If you're an ICU nurse or an ICU doc and you become infected, not only are you out of the game or potential, for potentially weeks or killed, but your replacements could be people without your expertise. Your remaining co-workers are then short staff, more likely to make mistakes and become ill themselves. You stop being a force multiplier and you start using healthcare resources. You going in may save the patient, it may not. But you can't save any patient in the weeks that you're laying in the hospital bed or using a vent yourself. People are going to die. And that makes us sad. We're in the business of saving lives. However, you don't want to become the one who dies. Stopping to put on proper PPE may be the hardest thing that you've ever done in your life. Many of you say, I can never do that. I wouldn't be able to stop myself from rushing in and saving my patient. Liberian nurses and doctors said the same thing and many did run in to help. Not taking time to put on proper PPE. My patient needs me, they said. And then they became infected. They infected others and they died. They didn't help anyone after that. It is important that you continue to be a force multiplier. You are amazing and this is definitely your time to shine. So at the beginning of the day, decide whether you want to be a force multiplier or whether you want to be a patient so that you don't have to make an emotional decision in the moment. Now in the midst of it all, we need to be educated and follow the projections. And remember that they are just projections. Number two is that there are two websites that I would encourage you to go to once. And I repeat, once a day or maybe once every other day. 
because in times like this, disconnecting from social media and all the news outlets is important. You want to stay informed, but not to the point where it's causing you to have anxiety and be super stressed. The two are IHME.com, which is Institutes of Health Metrics and Evaluation. And if you are in North Carolina, NCDHHS.com, which is the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services. Now, if you are in another state, NCDHHS won't work for you, obviously. You will have to find another website that's applicable to your state. IHME tells you according to the state in which you live, all the beds that are available in the state along with the projected needs for those beds. This includes ICU beds and also general beds. It also gives you an idea of the projected amount of ventilators that are needed. And also when you scroll down, it gives you the projected deaths per day and also the projected overall deaths. I usually compare with the data that comes from the NCDHHS website to see whether we are on target or whether we are behind the target. In the state of North Carolina, it looks like we have lower numbers than we originally projected, which is good news. So those are the websites that I suggest. Number three is that I want you to take a deep breath and know that God is in control. I want to say that again, God is in control. Now we're a faith-based company and if you don't believe in God, I would invite you to stay with me because you may hear something that helps you. I can't abandon my faith in the midst of trying to run a company, so here goes. I want to be clear that this pandemic did not catch God by surprise. Now as Christians, we are aware that we have never been in control. We have always fought an invisible enemy. So going through this pandemic is very much like the words of Ephesians 6, 12. It says this, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness and the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Now, it says in the Bible that God does not give us a spirit of fear, but a power and of sound mind. This means having faith. Now, I listen to a lot of Stephen Furtick. He has a song and the first part of it goes like this. Today is a new day. It will bring brand new blessings and brand new battles. But within every uncertainty, there is hidden possibilities. So I don't dread any challenge that lies ahead because I remember all the victories behind. And my confidence is not in my circumstance. The Spirit of God is my supply. I'm steady under pressure and I'm ready for whatever. Because whatever comes my way, today the outcome is I overcome. Christ is in me. I am enough. I can handle it. I can't afford to stay afraid or let my faith hesitate. My purpose is at stake and he who called me is faithful. His strength in me is greater than any pain I feel or enemy I face. The promise of God is mine for the taking. Every plan he has made is guaranteed to come to pass. It will happen. If I don't back down, if I won't let go, it will happen. If I don't stop short, if I won't sell out, it will happen by faith but faith does not take the fear away. It teaches me to fight it. So bring the battle. I'm ready now. I've got something for Goliath. I can handle it. These are the words that we need to listen to in times of fear. God has got us. God says, be anxious for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication, make your request known. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding would guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. One of my friends, Nataki, referenced this scripture on one of our prayer calls and it blessed my soul. It is Psalms 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress my God, in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. 
You should not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I repeat, it shall not come near you. I encourage you to read and meditate on that scripture daily. There is power of life and death in the tongue. And I am speaking that over each of your lives tonight. Number four, know that leadership matters. If your hospital organization does not have a plan in place for you during this crisis, you are tied to the wrong organization. Let me say that again. If they don't have a plan, you are a part of the wrong organization. I'm not telling you to quit. I am telling you that leadership matters. Just let that sink in. The organization should be communicating early and often. You can suggest some things. You see, I know that you're a leader. Yes, you. Suggest that they have a contingency plan for the PPE. Suggest that they give employees a way of purchasing essential items such as milk, fresh vegetables, and other valued essentials such as toilet paper. Suggest that they have a way of communicating these efforts broadly within the facility and outside to your community partners. Suggest limited visitation and social distancing. All of these things can curb the illness rate within your organization. You again want to be a force multiplier and gaining the information that is needed makes it safe and provides greater good for the patient, the staff, and the organization. Number five is practicing mindfulness. We as healthcare providers are amazing at multitasking. However, multitasking can cause anxiety and depression. Focus attention is an endangered species. The brain does not multitask well. Darren Hardy is the former publisher of Success Magazine. He explained multitasking like this. You are trying to get from one coast to another. For example, flying from California to New York. If you took one long flight, that will be like having focused attention. But if you stop in each state in between, that is like multitasking. It takes you much longer to get there and it's not as an efficient process as focused attention. One thing that I do to decrease my anxiety and also to try to focus on one thing at a time is to meditate. Our amygdala is a part of our brain that reacts to stress. When practicing meditation, it calms the amygdala. I have to practice being focused because I can't perfect what I don't practice. Now during my meditation time, I am listening for God to speak to me. I pray daily, but my prayers are asking God for what I want. I need to be intentional about asking God what he wants. We as a people are focused on ourselves, but God is the one that we really should be focused on. Therefore, I seek to listen to him during my time of meditation. I usually put on a video by Wayne Dyer called Wayne Dyer Meditation and set my timer to however long I want to meditate. I usually meditate for about 10 minutes. You can do it for longer or shorter. This is not something that is set in stone, but it definitely helps. Number six, right behind mindfulness, is distraction. It works also. I used to work for a young lady that I provided home health services for that had spinal muscle atrophy, SMA, as it is commonly called. It is a progressive rare genetic disease that is caused by survival motor neuron gene that is missing or not working properly. As a result, things that we take for granted, such as breathing, eating, speaking, and just general movement become very difficult. And then the patient eventually gets to the point that they're no longer able to do those things. She was on a home ventilator. And the thing that always surprised me about her is that she was always reading these Christian novels. And not only that, begging to read these novels daily. I asked her one day why she liked reading so much. What she said has always stuck with me. She said that she read all the time because it helped her become distracted from the everyday life that she was living. This pandemic is tough. It has affected everyone. 
It has not left a stone unturned, as I said before. So I can tell you that one thing that I have done, I've started to binge watching TV shows. If you know me, you know that I rarely watch TV. It is just not my thing. But this binge TV watching has helped me disconnect. I've been watching this show called All American. It's a football show. Now, every time they hug each other or congregate at a party or a football game on the show, I cringe a little. And then I have to remind myself that they are filming in a non-COVID time. So distraction does work to keep us from looking at the news or Facebook, increasing our anxiety more. Also, laughter helps. I am constantly looking for funny videos or shows that make me laugh. Anything to take the stress off. Lastly, we have to focus on healthcare advocacy. Now, when I first became a nurse, all I thought of was going in, taking care of my patients and going home. Nothing more, nothing less. However, as I have advanced in my career, I can see the bigger picture. When I first went into nursing school, the nursing instructors were talking about Florence Nightingale. Now, I was like, who, who cares? This lady was born in the 1800s and unless she can tell me how to put in a Foley or how to put in an IV catheter, I'm gonna need for you to skip this lecture. What I did not understand at that time was that Florence Nightingale was a pioneer of modern nursing and that her advocacy as it relates to nursing is the reason that we are the most well-respected profession today. So the story goes that her family was rich and wanted her to marry and become someone's husband because that's what women did during that time. She didn't want to do that. She wanted to become a nurse. Now against her family's wishes, she went to Germany to nursing school. She then became a lead nurse at a hospital in London, very similar to the CNOs of the hospitals today. Only after one year of being a nurse, the reason is that she improved the sanitary conditions so much that she garnered the reputation as a reformer and an advocate of public health. During the Crimean War, Sidney Herbert, one of her friends, reached out to her to go to the hospital that served the soldiers during the war. Nightingale took a band of her nurses to serve and was shocked at the conditions. She realized that more soldiers were dying from infection than from the wounds that they sustained on the battlefield. She then insisted that there be fresh air and water for all the soldiers. The soldiers received healthy food to eat and all the bandages and sheets were washed daily. She effectively reduced the death rate by two thirds. She proved this by using pie charts and develop, developing the environmental theory. Now, I remember when I went to Raleigh to the North Carolina, with the North Carolina Nurses Association to advocate for the advanced practice nurses to have full practice authority through the SAVE Act. I remember us being in the courtyard of the Capitol building and remember seeing all those nurses and being so proud of them coming together to advocate for our profession. Now, I will tell you that when Senator Walsh from Washington made those comments about us playing cards during our breaks. You know those breaks? You know where you have to stand and you have to eat and your phone, phone not just your phone, maybe your vocera is constantly ringing and you get no peace. Yeah, those breaks. Yeah, we're probably paying cards. The, I literally went through Kubler-Ross's stages of grief. At first, I was in denial. I was like, let me look at that again. Because I know she did not say what I thought she just said. And then I was angry. I was like, yep, she said it. And then I started rolling my eyes and rolling my neck. And then I was bargaining, thinking to myself, people who are at this level of government cannot think we are playing cards on our brakes, can they? And then I was depressed. I was like, it makes me sad that someone would have this level of ignorance for our great profession. And then I just accepted it. But then I woke up the next day. Now, of course, most of my friends on Facebook are nurses. My timeline was lit up. And then I felt sorry for her. <laughs> Cause I was like, 
forgive her Lord because she know what not what she done done. I was shaking my head. What I realized in that moment is that we need to be very intentional about the people that we put into political office. They control things down to the color of our outside trash cans, whether a stoplight would be put up, what school district our children attend, or whether we have enough PPE. We need to be very intentional about putting people there that are advocates for the healthcare provider and not an opposer. There has always been some level of instability in nursing. It's definitely much better than it ever was. And it's never cool. However, we're like siblings. You come for one of us, you get us all. We are a nation strong right by ourselves. And I am super proud to be a part of that nation. Now I want you to take a listen to this poem by Edwin Hofford. As I look around, me I and see how life has changed all my younger hopes and dreams have all been rearranged I used to want to be a hero flying around just doing good learning as I got older to do the things I should I never wanted to be famous or even own big fancy cars or set foot on the moon and study the stars I did not seek out power to tell others what to do but if I could be like anyone, I'd want to be like you. Helping little children and some older people too. If I could go back in time, I know just what I'd do. I would not look for diamonds or a lot of money in a purse. I would be the best of the heroes. I would be a nurse. Although this poem highlights the nurse, this stands for all healthcare providers. You are amazing. This is Dr. Viola Pierce, the nurse nurturer, nurturing healthcare providers one message at a time.